Yeah, I guess, you know, we probably have a checklist of questions or things you want to get figured out by September 2nd. Yeah. What's kind of at the top of the list for you as D coordinator? You know, it's just uh, we, we've been making a big push and talking about it's just being all aligned on what our what our goals are, who we want to be, you know, really how we want to go about, you know, our everyday lives, behaviors, actions, all that stuff's going to lead to us being better football players. Obviously, we need to use camp is the ability to develop, so develop depth, you know, at all positions, especially the linebacker position. Um, feel pretty good about some of the guys that have opportunities to emerge. Feel really good about some of the guys that have stepped up and are proven players and, you know, the Leighton Van Der Esch's and the Tyson Maevas. Um, but really all around at all positions, we got to create depth. Um, it's a long football season and we want to find as many guys that, uh, you know, that we could find roles for or, or continue to develop. And when things happen, they're able to jump in there. Um, and then and then just confidence, overall confidence in all phases. And, you know, that's that's confidence to, to communicate. You know, that's confidence to play against the three different types of offenses we will face this year in the spread, pro and triple option. And, you know, one thing that we've talked about is that's the confidence to, to finish, to create turnovers, you know, to catch the ball when it comes to us, which the guys did a tremendous job of in the springtime improving. Um, but, but really when we look at it, um, um, we got a month here to get ourselves ready, really, to play those three different types of offenses that we'll face this season. Yeah, I think I counted on the depth chart, 26 guys, only four seniors. Yeah. And I think only one senior slated to start right now. Yeah. Uh, is that a nervous feeling? Is it an exciting feeling? Just so much youth and kind of inexperience you have. How, how do you look at the group as a well? No, um, you know, when we look at it and you look at all the guys, I mean, that's kind of why we went through what we went through last year, especially later in games. Um, you know, at times there was probably nine out of the 11, 10 out of the 11 guys that had not played college football. But we were looking ahead to build the depth. And, and because of that, uh, some of these guys that are, you know, barely a year into the program, your DeAndre Pierce's, you know, and the guys like that that played as true freshmen, they're so much further along for having played last year. So um, experience is a big deal. Um, we, we, we look at the depth chart in the springtime and we see there's not one senior on there you know that's that's a starter so, so to speak i think you know can some of that change yes but uh um we feel pretty good about the guys we have but we obviously we want to build some more depth with gabe perez you know at the yeah. linebacker spot now how do you kind of see his role what was kind of the thought the thought there with him and, and behind him it's interesting because he has some completely different yeah. guys it looks like you can interchange there at that spot yeah no question and i think we we play you know we got those three different types of offenses we play so when we're starting to set this up you know you got to look and see you know who's going to play versus the spread teams who's going to play you know versus the pro style teams and things like that and so being able to maximize the personnel we have and get guys in roles and fill positions and and the more guys we can play at an effective level, the fresher we're going to be down the stretch of the season. With Gabe in particular, though, what was it about him that kind of fits maybe that spot? And well, I think Gabe more so. You know, we play some pro-style teams this year that are going to be more condensed sets, you know, two-back, 12-personnel type sets where you look at, when you start looking at one-on-one -on -one matchups, you like Gabe Perez's matchup opposed to a smaller uh, nickel, so to speak, guy that will play, you know, in the spread versus the spread teams. Yeah, that's a position. How much will that, that position kind of help you guys adapt to opposing styles? Because you're going to depth chart take for what it's worth. You know, a guy that goes up to 246 and the yeah. guy that goes down to 194 playing that same position. And from week to week, it may vary, right? I mean, we, we pop out in the beginning of the season, and um, you know, Troy will vary. But you know, we know what we're going to get in the second week. You know, it's probably not. We're not going to be in our big personnel packages. That's not what we're going to get, you know, from Washington State. So, just being able, to, once again, the, being able to maximize the guys we have and give them roles that they can do well in, um, you know, opposed to one couple weeks down the line when we go play three pro styles in a row and it's going to be physical football, you know, and setting edges and and uh, you know competing to stop the run game on really both sides of the ball. How do you look at your group overall, linebacker? I mean, you. You lose like 280 starts or something crazy mm -hmm. with those guys that uh, the four that you had there. How, how do you look at um, you know the, the next the next wave there and, and how conf confident are you in picking up? The yeah, so we 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 uh, obviously we had some guys that played for three four years that started for us that did a tremendous job. Um, but the the first group we feel very confident about. Um, and Leighton Van Der Esch and Tyson, they've done it. They've played together on the field, especially down the stretch last year. They did a really, really good job down the stretch. Um, 
So we feel really good about that, but then it's about building that depth. And the young guys we have are extremely excited about. You know, and we knew this wave was coming. You could foresee it when, when all our uh, all our starters are in the same class. There, it's like, okay, you got to get ready for it. You know, and here it is. And it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity for guys to emerge as leaders. It's a great opportunity for guys to, you know, improve their roles on our defense and within special teams. Hey, were, you, were you back in 12? I can't remember. Uh, 12 was, yeah, okay. my first year. So that was kind of one of those years where in 11, you guys lost mm -hmm. all these guys. All those guys. Back. Five of the D linemen, right? The, the D linemen were uh, NFL type guys, yeah. you know, yeah, no question. So you, then you had guys like Tommy Smith and Mike Ackett and step in, and the guys that probably weren't going to get that, like, the J.C. Percy, you guys weren't going to get that NFL love, but when you talk about blue collar and stuff, is this, is this defense with Leighton Vandrush and David Moe, I mean, is there, is there any similar feeling with this group to that group where they lost a lot, but still yeah. that, that mentality is there maybe? No, I, you know, I, I totally get what you're saying, and uh, I mean, that's the thing about college football is like, it's here, it's now, it's new faces. But us, we go, we go in the staff room. We look at that board, and it's two years out. And we're, I'm looking at the linebackers two years ago, knowing what we're going to look like. So we go and get, you know, we sign uh, Riley Wimpy, who's going to go on a mission, knowing that when he comes back, yes, he's been off for football for two years. But guess what? He's two years older than an incoming freshman. So some of these things that you could foresee coming, you try to prepare for, um, and that's kind of the fun and uh, get on the personnel side, I guess, of college football. But uh, for those guys, they're excited. They, they get the opportunity to improve their roles, and uh, other guys have graduated and moved on, and so it's, it's time for the new wave. Question one for me, uh, just the 3-4, the, the, the look at the alignment. It looks like maybe with the studs being more with the linebackers, are we going to see more of a you know, three-down lineman type set? What do you kind of see as more of the base uh, as far as defensive? It'll be multiple still. We'll still be four down. We'll still be three down. That's the thing about the way we're structured. We could get in and out of either or um, without having to change personnel on the field. So that really won't change too much. Um, um, we're, we're really trying to recruit longer athletic bodies and finding ways to use those guys, obviously, on the field as well.